could you could you understand that empty set issue so to be more specific my question was the 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 issue was that from the empty set from the empty set to any set <coughs> to any set there can exist one and only one function So, could you understand this? Yes? Yes. Okay. So, tell me why? So, what are the main ingredients of this? What are the main ingredients of this? Okay, let us let us do it again then. Suppose we have a function. Then if this is the case, there are three conditions which are satisfied. Firstly, it has to be a relation. Secondly, I think Prof, we have lost the sharing. Oh, okay. is back on. Okay. So now you can see again, right? So the second point is this implication statement. Ah, sorry. There exists a Y in it. And the third point is x, y and x prime, y in f ah, implies x equals x. Correct? This is exactly what is meant by a function. Right? Agreed? Yes, agreed. Okay. Yes, talk. Okay. So now, let us see. Immediately we see that this statement, firstly, number two and three are implication statements, and number one is an assertive one, so it asserts what it should be. Implication means vacuous implication. So this one in orange already, number two, is true. This is a true statement. No questions asked because nothing needs to be seen. It is true vacuously. Right? Okay? So number two is gone. Now comes 
Number one and number three. Let's look into number one. So what is this? So let's try and see what is this set. So it means that u belongs to this set if and only if there exists an x in the empty set, there exists a y in A such that u is the ordered pair x, y. All right? This is the definition of a product set. Remember, the product, this is nothing else but the set of all ordered pairs. This is the definition. So it means, it means that, remember the first day that I said, it is giving a set is just to tell me what is it it and what is not in it. So it's a property. So x cross y, its elements are always ordered paired, so elements of x and y, and exactly this is the meaning of it, right? Now let's see. This means that this statement is same as there exists an x and there exists a y. So I'm just rewriting it. x is in empty, y is in A, and u is here. Remember, comma means and. So actually it should be something like this. OK? Now I am replacing the meaning of this. There exists an x and y such that x is not equal to x and y is in A and u is this. Now observe. This statement, it says there exists an x and a y such that this statement is true. Now, is this statement ever true? No, because this part is always false. This part is always false and the moment you have an and, one component is false makes the whole statement false. So, within this part, this is always false. So, the question that there exists an x, y such that something is happening, a false statement is happening, that's also false. So, this is obviously a false statement. And therefore, let's take, when can a false statement be equivalent? It means that a false statement is always equivalent to another false statement. Remember this truth table for equivalence, for if and only if for equivalence. It is, a, so this part of the equivalence, so this statement if and only if this is, this part is because both the statements are false. This statement is always false and this statement is always false. So therefore, these two statements are equivalent. So, this on the other hand is same as say this on the other hand or, 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 or I can, so I can say therefore that this statement U belongs to empty cross A is always equivalent to a false statement. So, therefore, 
this can be nothing but the intercept. Okay, so is this proof clear? <coughs> Anybody? Am I alone? No, we're just digesting the last statement from ah from way. From where you are saying u is an element of empty set cross a, therefore zero ah, empty set cross a equals to okay empty set. So, so remember, this is where I'm saying how were How were two statements uh, okay if you still want to extend so this I can obviously write as equivalent to stating now in terms of that u itself u is not equal to u which is equivalent to Does this make it a little more clearer? Yes, it does. Yeah, it's better now. I couldn't jump from that one to the previous one. This one, yes, does. Okay. Because these are all false statements, therefore they are equivalent. Okay? Okay. This... And this statement is obviously not the same statement, but logically they are equivalent, and that's what we are looking into, right? Okay. Is it is it similar to saying almost proving by contradiction? Say you assume something and you get something that is mathematically incorrect. Therefore, your assumption was wrong. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is. That is. That is. That is essentially the other way of phrasing this, that you assume something and you get a, get a contradiction. So that means you get a false statement. So therefore it is not uh, right. So this is the whole principle of deduction so the principle of deduction in is the following p and p implies q implies q okay so it means that if p, if you give me p and you prove p implies q, that's what you do, then you get q, okay? This thing is logically same as saying that if you don't, so this thing, uh, how do you show this? Well, you take so let's quickly see how how is this true because a statement like this is going to be true in the only case when this is false or when this is true so this will be false when this is true and this is false so already i've assigned q to be false you know and this side to be true. Now, if this is true, then P is true, and P implies Q is true. But you have told, but you have told me that P is true, so this says Q must therefore Q must also be true. But you have told me Q is false, so. Therefore, uh, it is not the case that this statement is false. So whatever be P and Q, this statement is always true. 
and we call this the prin principle of deduction. And what is the ad ab ab ad absurdum then? What is the con contradiction principle? Is that you have therefore that P is false, that means negation of P is true. And U implies, P implies Q, then Q cannot be true. Okay? Then implies that Q cannot, then Q is false. Okay? So, So that's what that that is what your absurd uh, contradiction. In other words, the whole idea is what I'm trying to do by this is. I am, I am. Kind of equating things. By some kind of logical equivalent. I am not saying that uh, this is exactly the same as this. I am saying these two statements are logically equivalent. If they are logically equivalent, then I am happy and I say that they are the same thing or one implies the other and so on. So, and we will see, we will see why we go down the line. And I have not also completely written that part that this is what a Boolean algebra is about and there is uh, uh, any two statements in a Boolean algebra, uh, if they always take the same, they are logically equivalent if and only if they always take the same truth values. So that's this idea of proving lie by this root therefore gets uh, gets validated that this is a correct way to do this that we are not we are we it's a, it, it, so that's what i said from the first day that mathematics is just a logic syntactic manipulation of certain statements okay we'll come come much more there's much more more story to this we'll come to it so the first part of Let's come back to this problem. So, it immediately turns out that MT cross A is MT. So, therefore, from 1, this is a subset of the empty set implies F is nothing else but the empty set. Right? So, if we have such a function, if it has to satisfy then F has no other way but to become the empty set itself. And once, so with that, so number one therefore implies this. So it now tells me what is the only possible choice of F. So with that we now know what is number one. And with that obviously number three is then correct. Because this side becomes true vacuous. Number three, we don't have to bother. It's the x y x prime y belongs to the empty set implies x equals to x prime. This is an implication statement, so it's vacuous true. Okay. So now all of this exercise therefore tells us that if I have a function, then it can satisfy. Then it has to satisfy these three conditions. And there is only one way in which these three conditions is satisfied is by taking F the empty set. And therefore, from the empty set to any set A, there exists one and only one function. And that is the empty function. Okay. Is this uh, doc, uh, can I just interject on that bit? Yeah. Uh, are we not taking the empty uh, the empty set as a function also itself? Yes, yes, yes. You're right. You're right. So the 
So, so you see, you see, there is a, there is a strange, uh, in this paradise of sect theory, there is a strange, uh, how do I say this, uh, the same set takes uh, several forms. Firstly, we saw that the empty set means is a set of all those elements such that which is not equal to itself. Okay. Then we saw it is well, it is the smallest subset of any set. Give me any bag whatsoever. There is one thing which is sitting always there as a subset, is the empty set. And now you are seeing that it has also the face or the picture or the form of a function. It is the empty function. Previous, sorry, even before we saw it, there, since it was the subset of every set, therefore it was a relation. And we called it the empty relation, right? It was an empty relation. And now we are refining that relational part to say, well, it was not only a relation, but it is a function. Okay? So, empty set, that empty set is also a function. So, actually, actually one should write, This should be the most natural, most logical, logical uh, way to write this. But I think I, which, what is the, f ah, yes. But we don't write this. Instead we write, we don't write this. So when we are looking at it as a function, we write this i. We write it like this. We write this i a. Uh, just to keep this, uh, well, why do we write this? It's another, this is just a notation. But we actually, as I said, IA is nothing else but the empty set. And uh, uh, how do I, how do I rationalize a uh, 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 usage? One could be that, uh, well, uh, we don't want to overload that symbol anymore. So we have uh, actually managed to get hold of another symbol, I, and the word I comes from the, the, this new name that we are going to give, initial. So you can think of it in this way that empty set is such a set that uh, from that empty set emanates, uh, uh, gets, you can, to any other set, you can get hold of exactly one way to go there, right? So if you think of a function f from a set A to a set B as some kind of a transformation of the set a into the set B. So what you are trying to say, say is, well, the empty set transforms itself uniquely to any other set. Give me that set. It is actually the transformation of the empty set to that set. And that transformation is unique. And unique depends on the set itself. So it changes from set A to set B to set C. That's, that's, that's how we want to see. But set theoretically, we must remember that this mode, this transformation, when looked upon as a function, is the same set, the empty set. All of these IAs are nothing else but this empty set. 
So IAs are actually the epicenter. Okay, but uh, to make this, uh, to how should I say, this is a kind of an illusion to say that, uh, and this illusion obviously to respect this idea that a function to be looked upon as a kind of a transformation from of the domain to the codomain. So this to be seen as a trans. So every set is a transformation of the empty set. And uh, that happens in a unique way. There is no way, two ways in which empty set transforms to the, to the, uh, to a set. But a set A, non-empty set, may transform in several ways to another set B. But the empty set always transforms to a set A in one and only one way. That's why we have chosen this symbol. But actually, as a function. That is only, there is only this, uh, they are all empty sets. Okay, so there are two, uh, two distinct uh, uh, viewpoints uh, in this, in this uh, denotation. But set theoretically, it's firmly set over here that there is, there is only one and only one function from the empty set to a set A and that is the empty function, that is the empty set itself. Okay? So this is the whole story. This itself is the whole story. Okay? Is it clear now? Yes, Doc, it's, it's okay now. So you should be able to uh, you should be able to uh, rewrite. So why proof this is there in the assignment? I would expect this full write-up means why you are saying this empty set is the only. Okay. So a rewrite of in your own words of number six. Okay. Okay? When you write for number six, you rewrite it in your own words, this whole thing that I said. This is very interesting to understand this, that uh, there is only one and the, the other side, for instance, is wrong. So what is wrong? The other side, what is it? So if you were to take a function from A to the empty set. Ah, what a thing. So if you have to take a function like this, again, so I know that this is empty set, so therefore, F has, there is only one choice again. Now the next condition says that if X is in A, implies that there exists a Y in empty set such that XY is in A. And remember this is now the empty set. And 3 XY and x prime y in this implies x equals x prime. This is the empty set. So this one is true. Now this already we have seen. Number one therefore tells us f is the empty set. That's why we are saying. Now let us look over here. Number two. This cannot be true when a is empty, uh, when a is false, if a is non-empty, because this consequence is always a false statement, because this part is never true, x, y belongs to the empty set is never true, is always a false statement, so there exists a y in phi, so is that a false statement, so this part is a false statement. 
So the consequent is a false statement. And if this has to be true, then X belongs to A has to be false. So the only way when, so the only way, only time when number 2 is true is A is empty. And that's what we have already said. From empty set there exists one and only one function to the empty set, to any set. So from empty set to empty set there exists only one function. Yes, that's true. So, otherwise this is false. So, the scenario is like this. So, as I was saying, you can think that all the sets you can think that as if these sets are or all these sets A can transform to B in several ways. B can transform to A, so there are several ins and outs and so on, right? I don't know. There are several such things, right? In between two sets. But the crux of the matter is from here, from the empty set, there exists exactly one way, and that is IA. It's the exact one. And so on. Yes, exactly one thing. And you don't have a way from once it gets to a non-empty set, you have no way to come back. You have no way to come back to the empty set. So this is the picture, you see. This is the set theoretic picture that is coming up. And so I am saying this is the diagram that is coming up. Uh, and that's why we gave uh, to give some entity to this diagram possibly we did not prefer to write empty set over here empty set empty set uh, but and we agreed to denote it like this and in this sense can you see therefore the meaning of the word initial so that is another name for the empty set it is often called the initial set the initial set or the empty set initial set because you see this is the picture everything emanates from the empty set but nothing comes to it unless somehow it become empty right you cannot come back to it you cannot come back to it by a function by operations yes you intersect two sets, two non-empty sets, you become the empty set. Okay? Uh, so you see this idea behind. So, you can take intersections, you can become empty. A, or there can be several other ways to um, um, operations that you can perform on a set to make it empty. But, uh, by a function, you can never come back so you can never have a function from the non-empty set to the empty set. That's the whole idea. Okay? So this is the picture as if it is conveyed. Huh? Is this clear? Yes, Doc. Yes, Doc. So, then I will, uh, the similar, the similar number 7 is, so suppose I have an, I have a set A, and 
I have the one point set, which I usually write at one. Can you give me a function from A to one? Can you give me a function from A to one? What what this function? Yeah, 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 yeah. what is it? It could be the empty set. Okay, let's see. So the question is, is empty set a func function from A to 1? Okay, let's see. Yes, obviously empty set is a subset of A cross 1. That's the first condition. The second condition is X belongs to A implies there must exist a Y in 1 such that the ordered pair belongs to the empty set. Here is told me as a candidate, right? But this statement can it so if A is non empty, if A is non empty, this statement is false. This is false. If is non empty. Right? So uh, I started off by saying, okay, so if A is the empty set, yes, there is one function and that's the unique function. Agreed. But if A is non empty, so your exercise tells me that the empty relation cannot be a function from A to 1. Okay? So A non empty implies the empty relation is not a function with the domain A and codomain 1. Okay? Clear? So empty goes out. It is not a function. So can you give me a function from A to 1? Think. So A is non-empty. I need, for each element, I need to assign a value at the codomain, right? This is the value, right? Y is the value of X at the codomain. Right? So, now think. So, giving this hint. So, can you give me a function? A constant function? Good. Good. So, obviously. So, you take A and you take any element X and 1 the constant function which takes the value because one has the empty set is a element of the set one so the constant function so the constant function taking the value Right? Now, my question is, can you give me any other function? Is it possible to have any other function? Yeah. 
let's think if it were that means it is not the constant function like this that you have I have shown so there must be some x over in a which takes a value different from the empty set right But is it possible to take any, any value other than this? Does one have any other option? This set 1 has only one option left. You cannot give any other, any other value. Right? So this obviously there cannot exist any other function. So again it turns out that so is this is this part clear that you, you you cannot have any other function okay so let's see so now let's 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 so how do we prove it so suppose if let f be a function then The three conditions are satisfied. Two for each x in A, there exists a y in one such that x y belongs to F. I'm writing it a little and if x y and x prime y belongs to f then x is equal to x prime okay now let's see what does 2 tell me so 2 essentially tells me this is same as x belongs to a implies x this is a member of it. because there is only one there exists a y in one and there is only one option for y because since y belongs to one if and only if y is the empty set. Okay? There is no other way. So therefore, this implies that x and this statement is therefore same as saying there is a little more jump over here. So this says f is nothing else but a cross 1. So there is no other option for f left. f has to be the whole relation. So it is the whole relation over here. Okay? And therefore, so this one, this, this statement is true, this statement is true, and there is only one way that this can happen is that f becoming the whole relation a cross 1. Because, and over here, uh, oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake over here. Sorry, should have told me. I meant to say here. Okay. So, and this one is obviously true because there is, this is obviously true because one is nothing else but this. So, you cannot have. So, therefore, this is true, this is true, this is true. All the three conditions are true and f is a cross 1. So, there is only one way. There is only one. Only one option one way uh, 
to make such an app to have a such an app and it is the whole relation now this is again another another issue we don't when we when we denote this as a relation we use this but when we would like to speak of this as a function we write this as ta and again you see the picture is this the picture is that you have exactly one way to go. So as if there is a unique starting point, an initial point, and a unique ending. So the start and the end is, and that's why often we call this, and that's, that's the reason why we write T, because one is often called the terminal set. Or the singleton set. And interestingly, interestingly, so what is the property? The property over here is that this is the, this is the property, every, the, the, there exists exactly one function with codomain with domain a and codomain one so in other words in our symbols remember the set of all functions from a to b was denoted like this. Also another, so this was, remember this was the set of all, set of all functions. From A to B. So with domain A and codomain B. Another symbol for this was B to the power A like this. So therefore, what I am saying is, home A1, this is a singleton set, has only one element. Okay? This is what I am saying. And also that I said was home. This is also a singleton set. The initial. Uh, one reason you will see why this this alternate symbol is quite interesting, and that's why I came to the next one. So this is sorry. So this is say. 1 to the power a as if so this is as if this is trying to say so as if you see 1 to the power a is a singleton and I'll come back to this equality and as if this is trying to say a to the power as if this 0 
some kind of an basic index rule. Okay, I'll speak about this equality later. Uh, so I still keep them in brackets. So uh, giving you an intuitive idea of of uh, why this symbol is also very very significant and this uh, alternatively used also and a kind of a strange equation for sets even. So this is true, right? Uh, and this is the picture that it is giving, that you start from the empty set, it transforms uniquely to each set A, and each set A transforms also uniquely to the final or the terminal set, which is one. And everything, all possible transformations, whatever is going on in between. Okay. Uh, well, you can you can imagine why you can imagine why uh, philosophers. Uh, after Cantor's set theory became well known, uh, especially in this form as known as today, often philosophers say this is the paradigm of life. So, uh, well, they take this take this analogy of transformation too much, and now it is pretty clear why they say it. All the transformations going on in between and starting and ending point is the same, and blah blah blah. So that's the philosophy. But uh, well, that has nothing to. That's that's a philosophical interpretation or whatever. But uh, the actual set theoretic underpinning is this type, okay. Uh, and then I'll come to number eight. That's also quite interesting. So, let's start with an example. Let's take this A to be this uh, say this class. This is a set of U3 students. Now, I want a function. Remember, this is the singleton set, has only one element into A. Can you give me a function? Yes? Anyone? Am I alone? No. Can we? Yes? No, Doc, you're not alone. You're yeah, not alone, Doc. We are with you. Okay, so can you give me a function? See, the best way to view a function is. You take an, take an each element of the domain and say what value it is going to be assigned. And make sure you don't assign two values to that same, to, to any element. So that's it. That's the picture. This is our original classical picture that you had of a function. So, give me a function from one to a set. One to this set A that, is, that has been indicated. Can you give me a function f? How many elements does one have? One. One. And that is 
BMT. Yes. So, so where will you take it to? You want to give a value to this? Uh, is it not to A also? A is because not an... An empty set is an... An empty set is an element of any set. It is not an element, it is a subset. There is a difference between saying empty set is a subset of every set. But empty set is not, it is not one of the elements of A. This, in general, the empty set may or may not, but in this case, the set A, the empty set doesn't belong to A. But it is always a subset, yes. This is true, but here it is not an element of A because what are the elements of A? The names Stanley, Charles, yeah, Charles and Ayub. Ayub. These are the elements. So, empty set is not an element of A. Okay. So now, where will this Can we also map it to A? Huh? Yes, again? Can we also map it to A? No, because A is also a subset of itself. But A is not a member of A. At least in this case. Right? A is not a member of A. So we map it to the complement. <laughs> well, 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 well. You will have to map it to one of the elements of A. The okay, we can use S for standing there. Eh? Okay, so, okay. So that is, and, they've, and therefore, no, none others, right? So you have, how many functions therefore from 1 to A? 3. 3. Good. So, you have, Okay? And there is no other function, right? So these are the only three functions. Possible from 1 to 8. So you see, the number of functions possible from 1 to 8 are exact determined by the elements of that set A. Okay? So, as if I can say that what is this function doing? It is taking the empty set to the name Stanley. So, let me write it like this. Let me denote this function like this call this function the name Stanley. So what does this do? It takes that element empty set. What is its value? The value of the name Stanley is Stanley. The value of the name Charles is... So what is the value of this? So in general, for any A, I can write it like this, for any A in A, the function written like this, this is often called the name for A. What is its value? Well, this has at the empty set, its value is A. And that's the only possible value that it can take. Because 1 has only one element. So it's often called the name function, the name for A. Name for an element. Okay? So, the outcome of this 
exercise is saying... Doc, we, lo we lost your screen. Ah, okay. Can you see it again? Yes, it's back. Okay. <clears throat> so it's called the name for that element A. So this exercise tells us that given this set A, how many functions are there? There are as many functions, at least as many functions as there are elements of A. And what are the functions? They're precisely the names of A, names of the elements. So that's, that's how you get it. Names of the elements give me the functions. And they are the only ones that you there. So for this set A, there are exactly as many functions from 1 to A as the number of, as the elements of A. So as if, so we are going to, so as if, as many functions as the elements of it. And we are going to make a sense of this. What do I mean by this very soon? But it gives an idea that, see, this is, oh, the exercise tells us that there is nothing special of this set A, uh, consisting of these three. I could do it with any any set, right? I can do the same story with any set. So that's essentially the idea behind uh, number eight. And then now it's a little more complicated if you have two elements. So remember two. So try out the same Sorry. example. Yeah? I think we fit a gremlin again. Um, Charles and Stanley, do you see the ah. doctor's writing? Yeah, no, the screen is, there is a problem on the screen. Oh, oh. Like a delicate I can see it. I can see the screen quite well. Oh, no, no, I can see, we yeah, can see. It, now it's fine now. Ah. Okay. So, so, the, oh, oh, it's already eight. Sorry. Uh, so this is the two element set three now you have to give me try out with this example of a the specific one so here you have to now give me the value for this and the value for this okay you have to fill in two places okay and so on how many ways can you do this so that's that's all the story about so how many functions from 2 to A, how many functions from 3 to A and so on. That's about number 8. And once we have this, then we'll come to number 9. So this week, let's stop here. Let's stop here. There are quite a few things to work out. Any questions? I don't think I think everything's clear. Stanley? No, but without ge I'm guessing on the second one. Yes. And, uh, without even thinking. Yes. That it might be factorial. Okay. Okay. Think. Think. No, it is not the factorial. You see. Okay. Now I was just guessing. So no, no, not based on anything. No. You are saying factorial yeah, because you are saying, uh, but you see, the idea is each element, so there are two elements, each element gets associated with only one, right? But I have not said, so I have not said that a picture like this 
So I'm trying to associate a picture. So a picture like this is quite possible. Ah, uh, yes. A picture like okay. this is not possible. This is not the case. Okay? From If you look from this side, you can go to only one place. But two things can come to the same place. So, your idea of factorial came out from you eliminated such things. That's why you said factorial. Right? But once you bring in these, then the answer is no more factorial. Okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. Are you? Yes, I'm quite Okay. So, if there are no further questions, then uh, let us, let me first stop the recording and then we stop.